Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What, what it's saying is, one more. It's just saying basically, a woman, she holds down her household, right? In addition to her holding down her household, she'll go out and get the groceries. She'll go out, you know, and plant vineyards. She'll go out and make deals for her husband while he go out and get the food and all that. She'll do things in, in addition to being an excellent wife. You know I me mean? raising his children but she's not just doing that she's actually doing more she can sew she can get business deals done she can go out and you know what i mean hey babe you know i watched this property i put a bid on this property let's go ahead she's building more to his kingdom you know she's been a pillar of rest she's adding she ain't just bringing a pretty face she's actually bringing a pretty face and in addition to that she's also bringing a healthy mind where he can sleep at night like damn i gotta be a princess i'm good Stress free. I'm stress free, right? Let's get that pillar of rest real quick, and I'm gonna give it back to you. Get that pillar of rest. Let's get Sarah. Twenty six and one. This is the goal for all women, man. All women should be striving for this per particular purpose right here. Give me that Sarah. Twenty six and one. Book of Sirach, chapter twenty six and verse one. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Virtuous wife. That's what he said. The Lord said, "You blessed. Let me be highly favored if you got a wife like that, right?" Rather than a wife that's always want to be in the club. She always trying to go to Vegas. She always trying to, you know what I mean? She always out. No, the Lord said, blessed is a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is a woman that take care of her house, but in addition to raising the kids and taking care of the house, she's going out to get groceries. She's going out and buying property. She's going out and buying clothes. She's like a she's like a business woman, you know what I'm saying? She's a professional. She hold down her house, but she also go out there and have the business. Like, hey, babe, I'm bringing most stuff to your castle. That's a virtue for the For the number of his days shall be double. The number of his days gonna be double because now he ain't coming home stressing like most niggas. They come home like, damn, here she go again. That's weird, that, that put pain on your life. That take away days of your life, man, when you got a woman, you going out dealing with the world and you gotta come back home and fight her too. Oh, she's supposed to be a rest. Watch this. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. I be double. She like, damn, baby, where you been all day? I miss you. You want that, that, that warm welcome when you come in the house. I just did a 12-hour shift. The last thing I need is my wife talking shit. Right. Salaki, I know. Excuse my language. The last thing I need is my wife talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Fulfill all the years of his life in peace. Because he got a woman that really, really got her mind instructed. Read. A good wife is a good portion. Which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Wife is given to a man to fear the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Usually a man that have a wife like this is more than likely favored in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? And usually if he got a bad wife that's out here cheating and doing the most where, you know, somebody that, you know, that's your judgment. You know what I'm saying? You got a good wife, you got a good judgment. You got a bad wife, that's your judgment. Read. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good, a good heart towards the Lord, he shall all the, at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. Absolutely. Whether he rich or poor, he got a good high, good eye towards the Lord, he could be good. Drop down to verse 13. Verse 13. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, and her discretion will fat his bones. Discretion? What is her discretion? What do you think that means? Absolutely. That's because she's smart. Her discernment, her decision making. You know what, babe? That's probably not a bad, that's probably a bad idea. She can offer advice, and he like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to you because you always give me good advice, right? You want a wife like that? You can actually talk to. Hey, look, babe, what you think about this property? Or what you think about moving to Atlanta or whatever? You know, she can actually offer some substance as opposed to just having a pretty face and a big booty. You know, what I'm saying with most women now, and that's all they can bring. Read. A shamefast and faithful woman is a double grace, and her continent mind cannot be valued. A shamefaced woman, a woman that's righteous and humble, is a double grace. And he said, it ain't nothing that can come close to her. Because you don't have that many women that's... I don't want to use the word docile because a lot of times women... What'd you say? Of that nature. Of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times women as associate docileness with being weak. But you can be docile and strong at the same time. Stronger when you need to be, right? I'm docile and I respect my husband because I trust him. You see what I'm saying? But if I need to make a stance on something, I'm going to do that too. You see what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm going to make a stance on righteousness. You see what I'm saying? Read. It's more about the, the approach. It's all about the approach. It's all about their approach. And, it, it, and you, you look at the wise women in our nation, 
they all had these characteristics. That's why they got everything they wanted. Judy, Dana, um, Esther. Esther, they all had this approach. Esther had a king, you know what I'm saying? But she was very, very docile and smart. And she got everything she wanted to the point he was like, let's go have on a kingdom. We can have whatever you want. Because she, her approach, she, I mean, to add on top of that, she was beautiful. She was gorgeous, but she didn't care about her being gorgeous. And she didn't just use her looks. She was really respectful. She would cook him dinner. She would rub him down, make sure he was good. And then, you know, and then she, you know, you, you, you know how to you get what y'all want if y'all need to. Right? Just follow the order, man. This is what our women was doing. They was they respecting their kings, making them feel good. Read. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife and the ordering of her house. Man, you heard that? Read that. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife. The Lord said, like the sun rises in the heaven, right? That's a beautiful thing, in the sunrise, right? He says, that's compared to a good wife. That's how beautiful, the beautiful is the sunrise is comparing to a good wife. You know what I'm saying? Because that brother is gonna be happy, man. That brother ain't gotta worry about nothing. He ain't gotta worry about his wife being out and about every other city she go. He ain't gotta worry about none of that. He he knows she at home. And if she not at home, she gonna get that bag. He gonna bring it back home to daddy. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a great feeling, right, Reed? As the clear light is upon the, the holy candlestick, so is the beauty of the face in right age. Absolutely. So, so, so is the beauty of the age and, and somebody that's aging wonderfully. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's going into. So, yeah, man, this is, this is a good uh, description of a, of a virtuous woman. Sirach 26, just go ahead and read that. It, it's interchanged with some wicked women, too. You know what I'm saying? The middle part of that talk about w wicked women, but for the most part, it's talking about righteous women. Go ahead, I'm Oh, God. So, yeah, see, we got to get the brother with a little more experience up here. See, you know how to break it down. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's really all we're here for. So, like mentioned with that Zephaniah and 2 and 1, it's important to gather yourselves together. So, if you do feel comfortable enough, definitely let your husband know. Maybe he can come out here one day. Come meet us. Or if you wanted to take somebody's number, give him our number or our contact information. Or take an email. Take an email. Or take the email. Take yeah, email. even better. Yeah, I know how it is. Believers of the way, 144K. Believers of the way, 144K. Believers of the way, I, I, I take it. Okay, hold on, let me go back to my... You said, how are you? Damn, I thought you weren't coming, man. And then with that, I we can... We, we... Oh, yeah, my back. Yeah. And then even with that, too. So now that we, we get in some communication, we sit down with your husband and see how y'all feeling. You know, and then, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, do anything. If you guys got further questions, I might need some guidance in my house, some biblical questions on the law, on how you're supposed to, what is the law specifically saying? Am I supposed to do this? If I can't do this, what does this mean? There's a lot of questions. Everybody needs a teacher. We all still learning. So it's beautiful just to have yourself around a, a, a group of people who has the same mindset, that we're genuine and want to help our people get, you know, get back to where we're supposed to be. So definitely, definitely let us know. Just email us. Go ahead, yeah. Because I know you came out before. Did your husband send you last time to come out here? Okay, so that means he's kind of interested. Not necessarily in us, but just in the doctrine, right? Okay, what, can I ask you a real, damn, this is, give me the other one, huh? This is going in and out, this is going in and out. Damn, and you know what's coming, I, I mean, I, I mean, this first time, I'm like, all right, the second time, I gotta ask her now. What, 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 what's stopping y'all from going all the way in? Are y'all still digging? Okay, he was on his way to work, Mark. So today is his only off day. I was doing work and I was going home and I saw okay. guys, so I just pulled over. My check, my check. It's lock, you know? Yeah, turn that one off, man. The water. All right, so I want to I wanna ask you. Damn. This is, this is, I don't know why he's keep going in and out. But um, how long you been studying? I remember last time you was pretty thorough. You was taking notes and all that. That was about, what, about two months ago? Three months ago? Okay. Um. So what's what's stopping you from taking that leap of faith and going all the way in? Well, I don't want to do it without my husband. Okay. So I don't know exactly what is stopping him. But he, he's very smart. He's into the Bible. He's good with history. I don't know what's stopping him. But I am going to keep 
so, so the situation is right now, you correct me if I'm wrong, you're a little bit more into it than he is. He's more into it than me. He cancels me. He cancels me. I ask him questions. Okay. He directs me to verses. Uh -huh. But I don't, I, I don't know what's stopping him from joining camp or coming out here. I don't. Oh, okay. Outside okay. of our work schedule, I don't know. He don't necessarily have to join a camp. Mm -hmm. That's not necessary. You know what I mean? He can learn online and stuff like that. The only reason why I suggest to join somebody is because the scripture and your brother, your husband might be smart and sharp enough to teach you himself. Is he doing it the right way? You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to teach you. But nevertheless, the only reason why I recommend to join a camp is to give you structure. To give you a foundation that you're not gonna get nowhere. You're not gonna learn online as much as you would amongst the women. You, I noticed you asking where the women at. Well, look, we got all of us got wives and all of us got kids. I would, you got kids. I would love for your kids to meet our kids. I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see, you gotta see. It's a fun part that you ain't gonna. I don't, don't want to do that without my husband. That's something. No, no, he have to come though. He would have to come. He could just be you by yourself. He, y'all not knowing that it's a whole aspect a celebration and turn up that we do that y'all don't see right y'all just see the, the street teaching y'all ain't even knowing like we be turning up we be having fun we often have a conversation of like when we want to keep the holy days and things like that those are festivals those are like our holidays remember in the world we used to keep christmas and all that the lord gave us holy days to do that and we turn up we be sipping the sisters be playing board games the, the little kids be playing i go see they be having fun you know what I'm saying? And so I, 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 I'm like, damn, I don't want you to miss that aspect of it. Because it's, it's a jolly fun part that a lot of times you miss if you don't join the camp. You see what I'm saying? You don't get that part of it if you don't join the camp. You just get all of the work, 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 work. You don't see like, bro, well, there's different aspects of the father. He wants us to have fun. Remember he said there's, every season there's a particular purpose. Let's get that. Ecclesiastes 3. 3 and 1. 3 and 1. He gave us a season and a purpose for everything. Come here, Marsh, give me uh, give me um, give me that Hebrews 10 and 26. Believers of the way, 144K, right? Time. Believers of the way, 144K. Gmail? Gmail, at Gmail. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to, so like it, and, and, and a time to every purpose under the heaven and a, a time to be born and a time to die. Of course, time to be born and the time to die, right? So everything has a particular season or an occasion, right? Watch this. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to dance. That's the feast day. You and your husband got to get on the floor and do y'all stuff. That's the time when we're supposed to be having fun and have a festive type of environment like how, how we did in the world. When we were celebrating all the worldly things, right? We're supposed to do that in, a time, you know, in the feast days. Read that. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. Almost hit him, bro. Damn. That could have ended real bad. Damn. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. You get, you get the point, right? <laughs> you love that, right? It's all purpose, you know what I mean? And occasions, and it's all a particular time. So I think, in my spirit, I could be wrong. It's time for you and your husband to join the camp. Y'all don't necessarily got to join us. We would love to give y'all the invitation. Look, ask my elder, man. He joined us not too long ago. Tell him, do we have fun on the feast day? Oh, yeah. We be turning up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm We know how to work hard, but we play hard, too, man. And I hope your husband see this, man. You know what I mean? Let me see. Camera, man. Big bro. If you, you know, what's his name? Dion. Dion. Dion, brother, man. Come check us out, man. We would love to have you. You know what I mean? You got a, a, a very, very humble good spirited wife you know what i'm saying we want to meet you i know you you know the apple don't fall too far from the tree i know you the same way come hang out with us man come chill out you know what i mean come drink one and pour with your boy one time man uh. you know what i mean you gotta you, you gotta do this thing together man the lord don't want us to do this bar so read that come on. 10 and 26 hebrews 10 and 26 
or if we sin willingly after that we have received the knowledge. Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together. The Lord said, don't forsake the assembling ourselves together. The assembly means a gathering. He said, don't do that. Read. As the manner of some is. Most people do. And I got this on my own. I'm going to do a dolo. I'm straight. I don't need no camp. I don't need nobody, right? The Lord said, read it again from the top. Not forsaking it. Not forsaking the assembly. Read. Of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. A lot of people that do it. You know what I'm saying? We get people walk up and down here, say we watch y'all videos. We're going to watch online. We ain't really trying to join the Lord. But the Lord said, look, don't forsake the assembly. Because it's another part of the most high. You ain't even getting the experience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're doing the dolo. Read. But exhorting one another is so much, and I mean, the more as ye see the day approaching. He said, come together as you see the day approaching. We can see prophecies are unraveling daily. So he said, look, the more and more the days are approaching, the more and more you need to stay together. Man, these are my brothers. These are my family. This is the most of the time I'm with them. I don't go out no more. I ain't in the streets no more. I don't even know my day one homies no more. I love them if I see them, but I don't know them. I don't know what they own. You know what I'm saying? I just I text them. Are you, are you alive? All right, that's good. That's it. Other than that, and then, yeah, how about Shem Yahweh Shari Bakatam? All praises, bro. Big bro. You know what I'm saying? So, I highly recommend that, sis. I highly recommend that. Let me ask you another question, okay? In terms of the commandments, keeping the commandments, how you feel about that? Do you know them? You know the 10? You know it's more? Okay. So you do acknowledge you're an Israelite. Okay. And you know that we got to keep the commandments to get back to the kingdom. Okay. Go ahead. I was just talking to my husband about it today. So I'm, he wants me to get away from black. The term black. And I was watching Ratazah. Is that his name? Yeah, right I was there. watching him this morning and he was speaking on the same thing. I don't know if I'm like more running away from the looks of what, what I'm talking about or... Like how, how do I, somebody asked me what's my nationality, how do I respond to it? So, I know we, we often identify as black, right? Now, the scriptures talk, say we black, too. They say we black, but it's not saying black as in the color. It just means dark, we're darker complexion. When you see in the scriptures, black is pertaining to darker skin, melanated skin, right? So that's what you're kind of sensationalizing, right? You kind of identify with being a darker melanated person right now there's a plenty of dark people so which one do you belong to that's the yeah that's the one you gotta know because exactly you're a jew so i'm a dark-skinned person yeah i'm black but i'm but i belong to an israelite category you see what i'm saying you say in particularly you say you identify with judah right so I'm a dark skin or a black person. That's not telling me much. Africans are black. Canaanites, Northeast, West, South Africa are all black. East Indians are black. Some Arabians are black. Some Palestinians are black. So how do I know which one you come from? I got... Damn, where my phone at? I got... I got... I took a picture right there on across the street. One of my brothers and an East Indian. Damn, I hope I can find this picture. I, I took a picture with my one of my brothers in the East Indian. Look, this East Indian is darker than my boy. You see that? So you saying you black, I ain't really saying much. Because he can say I'm black. You know what I'm saying? So what black nation do you come from? That's why we got to specify it, right? So that's why we say get away from that word. Because it don't say much. You know what I'm saying? It don't really say much. Africans are black too. Are we the same? Are we from the same tribe? Yeah, you know what I mean? So that's why we gotta be more specific and say, I am black, but I'm a Hebrew Israelite. That's my nationality. I'm dark skinned, I got melanated skin, but I'm a Hebrew Israelite. That's where I go back. My my culture goes back to ancient Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Israel is my nation. You get what I'm saying? So that that that's the correct term, political polit well not even politically, biblically correct term to use, you know what I mean? Can I answer your question? What's, what's that? What's that? Yeah, I like that. I like that. <coughs> Second Corinthians 11 and 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So, so am I. I. Yeah. yeah, that's my good priest there. That's my boy. He was talking that talk. He was like, hey, I'm a Hebrew. They Hebrews. So am I. 
Hey, Israelite, so am I. What's that? Second Corinthians. Yeah, yeah. He was talking that talk. So am I. Paul was in his bag a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah, keep reading because he was talking his talk. Read. And they minister of Christ, I speak as a fool. I am more. And say, look, y'all speaking Christ, I'm more. You got two churches, right? I got churches like Sabak. You got two churches, I'm like Sabak, and I got a hundred churches. Sabak got a hundred churches, right? This is, this is what he's on, you know what I'm saying? Paul was in his back. He's like, you got two churches, I got two hundred churches. Now what? Read. And labor's more abundant. And I labor. Don't nobody go harder than me. Ain't nobody out here like me. This is what he's saying. He's like, ain't nobody out here like me. Paul really dedicated his life to Yahweh Shai. Real, real talk. Like, even to the point he didn't even get married. He was like, I'm going to do, I'm married to Christ, and that's it. Read. And stripes above the measure. All right, all right, sis. Well, yeah. Go ahead and get home to your babies and all that, man. Um, Hold it down. You got our information? Man, you know, tell your husband. Um, We'll, we'll try to get it up Sunday. Sunday. We'll, see, we'll, we'll get it up Sunday. No, oh. this Sunday. We'll get it tomorrow. 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 Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, we'll get it up Sunday. Have my boy edit it down and all that and put it up. All right. Shout out to my sisters, man. Clap it up for my sisters.